Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bobble Pod. This is episode five, where we're going to be talking about the future outlook on agencies. Um, but before I begin, don't forget to um, follow, like, subscribe our podcast platforms. If you're watching us on YouTube, hi, don't forget to click on the little bell notification so you know every time our episodes come out. They come out every Tuesday, and there will be as part of season three where we're doing at least 20 episodes. Today, I am very excited to welcome our first guest on season three, Gareth Healy. How are you doing? Very good, Manny. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thank you for joining us. Um, Gareth will be joining us for the next two episodes. Um, We'll give more information about that at the end. Um, But I've got quite a few questions for Gareth because, as I said, the topic is future outlook on agencies. And as an agency owner, and I know, Gareth, you've run some very reputable agencies in the past, um, it'd be good to get your viewpoint. But before I do that, do you, just for our listeners and our viewers, want to introduce yourself? Of course, yeah. No, it's great to be here, Manny. Um, we've known each other for, for quite a while now, but for those that don't know me, I'm um, I'm an ex-agency owner. I've worked in the agency sector for 25 years now. Uh, I ran a business in Leeds for 15 years um, an agency in Leeds, but I exited that business about five years ago. So I'm um, an agency, worked in agencies in client services, owned an agency, and now I'm a, an agency consultant, agency growth coach, and I'm working with um, on my on my own, but working with lots of agency clients, helping them grow, helping them develop their businesses. And I can just say that because you give our relationship goes back to we met at our Leeds Digital Festival, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't believe I can remember that yeah, far back. No, Leeds that. Digital did. Festival. Yeah, Leeds I remember Digital, going yeah. for the breakfast. Did. Yeah. Um, and that was about, again, us learning because at that point we had, um, Bobble had two of the directors um, and we needed some advice. And I remember when I put a lot more investment into Bobble Digital, we brought you on as a consultant, which actually the learnings we took from that is why Bobble is still successful to this day um we didn't have the money other agencies people had to invest into it was a bit of early inheritance from me which i was very lucky to get but i invested it wisely and through thick or thin we're still here but honestly if if there are other agency you know um owners or even people looking to build their agency a small size like we was please reach out to Gareth, his advice was more than helpful. And even some of the financial structures, I still use those documents now today to help me break out and give me visibility of where we are and where we're going. Actually, it was the idea of Agile that we'd actually developed with Gareth. So if you go on our website, we, we class ourselves as an Agile digital marketing agency. And that came through you know, doing all those um, sessions, breakouts, thinking about what do we do, our processes, the peer system, our approach and methodology to allow us to stand out actually came from the work that we did with you. So if I've never said it before, I'll say it now on our podcast and on our YouTube. So it's there forever. Is thank you for the work and support you gave to Bobble at that time. That's very kind of you to say that, though, and I remember all those things, but also your own hard work, your investment, which took some guts, not just the money, it took the guts to do it, and uh, look where you are now. Yeah, fantastic. So, Gareth, I want um, to ask you a few questions about the world of agencies and get your viewpoint as well, share my own. Um, the first one, obviously, is you've... you've like you said, you, you ran an agency for 15 years, you've been in the industry for over 25 years, you're now consulting, consulting agencies... Um, how has the agency landscape changed over the last 10 years? Okay, good question. I wish I knew what was coming on these questions. They're, co- they're going to come thick and fast, aren't they? Well, that's they won't one. come too thick and fast, <laughs> but I, I want it to be a bit more, you know, off the block and actually yeah. get your actual response there. The and yeah. there. Response there and then 10 years. Uh, where was I in 10 years? I was running my agency in 20, 2012. Um, what's changed? I think I'd say... A lot's changed and, and also nothing's changed. So business models are still very similar, but but I think the big thing that's changed, it, it had, it's proliferation, really. It's more, of course, just like the life and the world in general for agencies, there's more channels, isn't there? There's, there's more choice of agencies. Uh, there's more complexity. Um, there's more competition. I think in some ways there's more complacency. 
it just to add another C, which is just off the cuff, because uh, it, it, part of um, you know what I sort of talk about in my consultancy is 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 not accepting that that you know this is an industry which you know just generates money. We've got to work very hard at it. So lots and lots, but more, more just like life in general, more is thrown at us, and trying to navigate through all that stuff is becoming is becoming harder, frankly. Than it was never easy. It was never easy at the start of my agency career. Uh, it's not an easy, easy uh, industry. There isn't an easy industry. It's not an easy, easy business to run. All businesses is, is have the challenges and are difficult. But um, it's become harder and, and and harder to navigate through that for agencies, certainly. Do you think it's become a bit saturated, the market, in terms of the amount of agencies Definitely, there are? Yeah, I think that in, in some ways I feel for clients, prospective clients, whoever they might be, choosing an agency is incredibly difficult because who do you choose? Do you choose on uh, location, reputation? Do you choose on, on the, the specific services that they offer or, or a general service? If you don't know exactly what you want, trying to talk to people about what you want, but them using language particularly in digital that that frankly you might not understand as a client and you if you're a, if you're a smaller business or a, you know you might not understand the terminology so again choosing an agency very very difficult but um there are so many agencies out there and the reason is it's 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 an easy business to set up um there, there are negatives of um or challenges with running agencies and, and running an agency business but there are many positives as well and one of them is you can set it up almost of an eye. It doesn't need any capital investment hardly. You need a laptop, you need a phone, you need a, an internet connection, uh, and you're away. So that 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 means for, uh, in terms of competition, that there's always a lot of competition out there, new entrants to the market. Even if you've been in the business for many years, you're facing people coming in, um, new entrants overnight with um, different skills and some some are good some some are not so good but but nevertheless the mark is yeah grown saturated I always find like the the good the more experienced the high quality staff in bigger agencies are the ones that end up going away and setting up their own that's right little Absolutely. team yeah, because they yeah. feel like you know the value they offer is more yeah. and they could get more out of it themselves which is I'm not saying what I did I, my my circumstances were different I've already explained that in previous podcasts in terms of what led me to work. Um, for myself, I always said it was too soon. I was probably less inexperienced. I could do the job, don't get me wrong, but and where do leads come from? When you're working for brand, you know, agencies like into marketing, it was like, here's a brief, here's a brief, here's a date booking for the next pitch, here's another date booking for the next pitch. Manny, you need to go win this one. Manny, here's your targets. All I had to do was deliver on the work that I knew and manage the team and grow the team and hire the right people, which is a key aspect of running agencies. The other part was like, building a reputation, standing out. When you set up your own agency, you realize how many they are. And just in Leeds alone, there's like over like 500 agencies and not all doing the same thing, but class sales marketing agencies from PR, creative, to media, to websites, to, you know, individual media specialisms, so SEO, PPC focus, et cetera. And you're competing with them. Um, if you're an agency standing out in that, that's yeah. mark is difficult, but also again, as I said, as a, as a client, finding the the yeah. needle in the haystack, if you like, as to who who you want to work with, who's the best to set up to yeah. work with you, is is incredibly difficult. But um, but yeah, ten years. I mean, lots of so lots of. But I think the biggest thing for me is there's more. There's lots of you know more choice, more channels, and and it means. Uh, but people have access to more information, of course, now than they, than they did uh, 10 years early. When I bought my business, 2002, so we were sort of at the start of the digital revolution then. So that 10 years, it was about getting to grips with it as best we could. And new, different digital technologies come along yeah. But since uh, since then, of course. But it was getting to grips with digital. But then, yeah, 20, 2012, in the last 10 years, I think it's been working with it. But also people have got a lot more inf- uh, access to information. So clients can do stuff for themselves, if they want, much easier than they could when I, maybe not 10 years ago, but when I started out in agencies. Agencies had a power when I started out because clients, uh, more of a power, because clients couldn't do what they could. They couldn't do basic things like artwork. I'm not yeah. talking about digital here. I can't say that you know, 25 years ago. Artwork for an ad was difficult for clients because it, it was specialist. You know, it was, it was an absolute specialist skill. And, and it still is for the artworkers out there, don't get me wrong, but equally 
you can go on Canva now, can't you? Even you know, you and I can yeah. spend ten ten dollars a month or whatever it might be. You've got Canva and and the like. Not an ad for Canva, yeah. uh, but other other uh, apps are available. But anybody can go there and access templates and use and put together artwork and do their own ads, posters, digital ads, websites. Uh, with Wix, et cetera, very easily now. So, I mean, I know that's for the bottom end. That's not for the, the bigger clients. They, they've still got that ability but don't want to. But if you, if, you, if you have the will, have the need, you can access that now. Whereas in my you know, start of my career, you couldn't. It was a, you yeah. didn't have the black book of art workers, photographers, designers, you know, that the agencies had that. So, you know, that, that power has shifted definitely through technology. You know, the technology is a, a boost and a, a massive benefit and what we base our businesses on. Yeah. It's also, um, you know, it's facilitated ease of access for other people as well who don't work in agencies. I, I agree with that. I think from my time working at other agencies, it was probably just at the forefront of what was being done on display, Facebook and stuff like that. You're right, Canva, if, you know, clients can just, you know, probably get like an intern in, give them Canva, train them up for a, a couple of weeks. And then you've got someone that can do your in-house social posting using those platforms. You've got free video platforms. The amount of tech and app applications and platforms out there that probably, like you said, give more power to clients, which they should. But then there's still that need for understanding how all these different parts of the jigsaw yeah. fit together and creating that strategy, which I think brings me on to the next question, which is the, the biggest challenges you think that marketing agencies are facing right now in the current age. We talked just then about, you know, that actually the, you know, small you know, clients and companies can go out and do it themselves. Um, one thing I'm going to touch on is the potential recession. You know, we're in, we're recording this at the end of June and, you know, it'll come out throughout uh, July. But what the hot topic right now is the cost of living crisis, inflation, interest rates. What impact is that going to have on the housing market and recession? So what challenges do you think are facing agencies like me or any other bigger ones out there right now? Yeah, um, I got another great question. And, and um, I think we all, well, we know the answer it used to be when anybody asked me about biggest challenges for agencies and i say used to be this is only you know when i started my consultancy business pre-pandemic uh, new business was always gaining new business was always the number one uh, agency challenge not that they necessarily were bad at it but, but more new business better uh, how do we gain you know how do we recruit people to develop business for us new business was all and, and attracting new clients was always the thing but of course I think now it's been relegated, which I never thought this would happen. So not only number two, I think it's probably still number two, but recruitment, of course, is number one, recruiting people uh, and retaining people to some degree. So you don't need to recruit is, is the number one challenge, you know, but that we're all facing. I don't think it's just in agencies, it's recruiting it in other industries as well, but agencies, absolutely. And what's the reason for that? There are many pandemics and uh, economy and people, but, it, but choice. You know, but having more choice for people, they, people can work uh, far easier on their own now as freelancers. People can work across geographies far easier. Um, the client businesses that used to rely very heavily on agencies have, uh, now often have, not always, but the bigger businesses have um, digital teams, studios, uh, creative teams, whatever it might be. So they attract people in. Um, and so that's become a real fight for... So the, I used to say the best talent, but I'm in the market at the moment. It's a fight for people that are, you know, that, that, that are in general. No, no, you, you rarely get to pick and choose these days. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm like, yes, yes, uh, yeah, and so, yes, in my head. So it is. And, it is. and I think that's that's also it's the challenge for us all, but it's also at the moment, particularly again in, in June 22, we're facing this sort of inflationary, um, not just finding the people, but, but people finding the people at the right um, price as well, because people are demanding, requesting higher and higher salaries as well as uh, everything else, aren't they? Which will that last? Will that continue? It, it can't forever, I don't think, but it's going to yeah. be a challenge for a while, yeah. I did a post on LinkedIn. I don't know if you might have seen it. I was like, I don't do counter offers. I got quite That's a bit of response yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. We we had this issue, and just to come on that point is, um, we we recruited someone as a senior paid media manager in February. Um, great candidate was based in um, north of Birmingham. The job was very specific. It would require him being relocated, but offer flexible working. When he came in, we agreed the working patterns. Out of the blue, about two, three weeks before the end of the 
probation period, which he was going to pass with flying colors and no, no concern, anything ended up finding a role, which allowed him to work just from home. And, and again, very difficult because you pay recruitment fees, you spend time and investment into it equipment and resources, HR legalities and all that to get someone in. Um, and then it says back.